Hello and welcome to Blessed by Angels. It's your girl, Jen, and I am here and excited to talk about this new Oracle card. Honestly, I feel like this is one of my favorite lessons and one of the most rewarding ways to look at life. This card is called Nothing is Permanent. So let's dive in. Welcome to the Blessed by Angels podcast. My name is Jen Gilbreth. Ever since I was a little girl, I have felt deeply connected to the angelic realm. Over the years, I have dedicated my time and energy towards delivering messages from beyond. Yes, that's right. I talk to dead people, although I don't necessarily consider them dead. In many ways, they are much more alive than us in this physical realm. On this podcast, I will be channeling messages from Spirit. Whether you tune in each week for the new messages or feel like picking a message at random, this podcast is designed for Spirit to lead you to the messages for you here and now. These messages have changed the way I view and play in life. I hope that these messages can do the same for you. I first thought I would start with actually reading the message, and then we can dive deeper into experiences and um, really more about what this is. The greatest gift that we can give ourselves and our spirit is flexibility. In the physical world, nothing is permanent. When we over-identify with that permanent space, we are doing ourselves and others a disadvantage. We are taught at such a young age that everything has to be so structured. Our spirit came here to explore, to experience this human journey. We live as though everything is permanent. When we spend too much time labeling how life has to go, it cuts us off from experiencing the fullness that this life has to offer. We never know what we are going to get. We never know how long we have. We never know how long someone in our life has. Remembering nothing in this life is permanent can give us such a sense of freedom. It can open a solace or freedom to love more, embrace family, and bring a new sense of adventure. And if we sit with that, really sit with it, it can bring a greater connection to all that life has to offer here and now. An inspiration of this card was channeling and delivering a message from a grandmother to her granddaughter. And she was wondering about travel, about where her life would take her. And she was at a position in a point where she was deciding whether or not she should go back to school, find a new job, move to a different country. This grandmother just kept talking about how nothing is permanent. You know, we spend so much time and energy and effort stressing and worrying about, am I fulfilling my purpose? Am I doing what I should be doing? Am I doing what my soul is calling me to do? You know, I find so often too, like even working with moms who have littles and they might think that they need to be doing more or that staying at home isn't good enough. That raising children that there's something different and more out there. And there may be, right? It's not one way or another. It's not bad or wrong, either or. But it's almost like we always talk about, me and Curtis, the grass is greener on the other side, right? We always have this interpretation. And it's easier to see that than to just like sit in the reality of life. But if we find ourselves fearing that we're not living up to our potential, well, what is it that's stopping you? Where are you keeping yourself safe? Where have the complacencies of life really settled in? Because as this grandmother was talking to her granddaughter, she just kept reminding us of how this life is not permanent. Nothing is permanent in this life. You know, we spend so much time worrying about having the best car, the nicest clothes, the newest trend, that we spend so much time and money feeding into these ways of being But the question is, do those ways of being make you excited? And if they do, then that's wonderful. And if they don't, if it's just another way of trying to fit in, I want you just to take a moment and reflect, how is that working out for you? 
does it feel like it's giving you reward? Or are you constantly feeling like you can never catch up in the rat race of life? You know, I look at trends and it's just funny to watch the trends that come throughout the times and how much money we spend on these trends that we wear these clothes for a certain amount of time that all of a sudden we're like, oh, there's a new trend. It's a new clothing line. It's a new skincare line. It's a new way of doing our hair. It's a new book collection to spend time with. And those things make life really fun. But at what point does that cause a sense or a lack of self-fulfillment? If we're constantly in the space of, I need more, I need this, I need new, well, what is it that you already have? And how can you use that to the fullest until maybe it's time for something new? We've been caught in this consumerism that's taking over life. It's taking over the joy. It's like, oh my gosh, I can't just go have fun with friends because I have to be so worried about not having the newest clothing. But why? Does that even fulfill? Are those clothes even comfortable? And we find ourselves in the space of constantly feeling like we can never catch up, never catch up with bills, never catch up in style, never catch up with the new trend, never enough. But all of those things that we spend our whole life thinking about, like in the long run, when we leave this earth, is any of that going to matter? Because to me, and what I've experienced, is that our loved ones do not give, a, they don't give a damn about any of that. What they care about is the connections that they had, the memories that were created. That's it. They did not, they do not care about the cars that they drove, the house that they spent endless hours pouring all of their time and attention into, maybe yelling at the kids because they wanted a perfectly clean house all of the time. In what ways do we focus and put so much intense energy on things that do not actually matter? Because none of that is permanent. Living in an RV right now has given me a great sense of this. You know, right now we're in this windy fall coming in season. And one night we were going to bed and the whole trailer was shaking because it was so windy. And I just remember thinking to myself, this is my home. Like, this is everything that I have. And yet, none of it's mine. I mean, yes, it's mine, but it's not anything that I'm going to carry with me. But these memories. And when we have too much of something, you know, we have started drinking these herbal drinks that we used to drink a lot when we first were married. And um, because my husband was working for that company, we just had a surplus of all of them. And now we're like buying it box by box because for one, we don't have a lot of space. And for two, it was we just took it for granted having all of that with us all those years. And I find it so fascinating now because the other day there was a drink that was half full and I'm like, oh, we need to finish this. We need to finish this because one, we bought it, but two, like why would we let it go to waste? Where when I had a surplus of that, that wasn't even in my space. And it wasn't out of scarcity, but it was out of like, no, we have this to fuel us. So let's use this. And even when we were laying in our trailer and it was shaking like crazy, I just kept thinking like, this is such a cool experience and such a good reminder that in fact, the things that we worry the most about do not matter in the life to come. Now that doesn't mean that we can't, you know, that doesn't mean that we don't pay bills or that we don't, um, 
have a job or that we don't have stuff clean, right? It doesn't mean that like we just dump everything to shit because that's the opposite of being in this space. But it's more so when we look at life and see that nothing is permanent, we can have greater gratitude for what we have in this present moment. You know, because this morning there were people who their loved ones did not wake up. And yet waking up just felt like it's just something that happens, right? But when we look at life as a state of temporariness, it gives us a greater sense of uh, of awe, of being like, yeah, nothing is permanent. And am I making the most or am I even in the space of honoring where I'm at? And if not, this could be a great reflection time of what have you been putting your time and attention towards? And is it something that is soul fulfilling? And if it's not soul fulfilling, well, what can you do to put some other aspect in place so that more soul fulfilling experiences can be had? Because we are not promised tomorrow. We are not promised today. We're not promised the next hour. And if nothing we bring with us, and like, think about that. We don't bring any of that with us. So what is our relationship to that? What is our relationship to life? What is it that we want to be doing more of? What memories, what people, what connections are really calling us? And it doesn't have to be a scarcity. You're like, oh no, what about this? But more so, how can you make the most of your human life, of your experience and of your existence here and now? Um. Yeah, it's so funny, just the many earthquakes, you know, that we experience even when one of us is walking or if the dogs are breathing too heavy, it creates like a mini earthquake within everything. (laughs) And when we travel and when we move, everything slides around. Our house is constantly breaking right now. Our freaking door to our bathroom broke off. And so (laughs) we have no bathroom door right now. And it's almost comical at how much this is showing up that none of it actually matters. It's the memories and the creation and the connection that life brings. And every time we go to the bathroom, I just kind of laugh right now. We'll get it fixed. But it's just funny. It's funny to see how life can, can be looked at in different ways. I wanted to read this really cute poem. Um, I love all little things fairies. They're so fun. In my book, Blessed by Angels, A Memoir of a Medium, I talk about how the fairy realm was so connected into my being as a child and how I would talk to the fairy realm and they would teach me. Um, So I've kind of been working on some different fairy poems that I will put together at some point in a little book as well, or something. I don't know necessarily what that's going to be, but let me read this to you. In the forest of life, we rush through the trees, gathering trinkets and trophies with ease. We dance with the shadows, chasing the gold, forgetting the whispers of secrets untold. Our hands become heavy with things we don't need, while the light in our heart begins to recede. For in all of the doing, we wander astray, missing the magic that slips far, far away. But there in the stillness, a fairy does hum, reminding us gently, come home, child, come. She flutters on breezes with nothing to hold, her wings made of moonlight, her crown spun with gold. Lest she sings softly is where we must start, to hear the true song that beats in our hearts. For it's not in the having, the rush, or the race, but in the sweet moments where time has no pace. Connection, creation, and growth of your soul. These are the treasures that make you whole. The threads that you weave when you're quiet and kind are the ones that will last through the ebb and flow of all time. So pause in the flutter, dear traveler lost, and remember what's priceless cannot be tossed. In the, si- in the space of the simple, we truly become, as fairies and stardust lead us back 
to one. I just think that that is such a magical poem and so true with what this card has to offer that nothing in this life is permanent. And this can give us great reverence and respect for this life. So I wanted to leave you with some questions. As automatic writing and journaling is a part of my soul, I love to offer that to other people. So some questions to think about to complete this podcast. What does your soul long to experience? How can you move forward in that direction? For this soul-longed experience, who do you want to be there with you? My beautiful soul tribe, I just wanted to end this podcast with letting you know that you have support and loved ones who are here to help you, who are here to honor your being, those in spirit and those of the world. And that when we can reflect on what truly matters most to each and every one of us, it's going to be different. And I don't mean that following the trends is bad and wrong. But what it really comes back to is having a space of abundance. And abundance doesn't come from having a lot. Abundance comes from within. And experiencing what truly matters and brings magic in life so with that i leave you i want you to know how grateful i am if any of this podcast really registered or connected to you or you feel as though you want to send this to somebody i would love to have them also experience this message i thank you and i love you and i bless you Om and so it is Thank you for tuning in to the Blessed by Angels podcast. It is such an honor to deliver these messages from beyond. If you want to connect deeper to your angelic realm and the support team that you have, I have a plethora of resources on my website at blessedbyangels.org. And of course, I'll leave the link in the show notes. You are connected to the divine. Having divine connection is innate ability that each and every one of us have. Before we came here, we were spirit. And after we leave this realm, we are introduced back into the spirit world. So having spirit to spirit conversations and knowings and understandings are innately and infinitely who you truly are. When we step into this body, we tend to forget. We are not separated from the divine. There is just a lack of remembrance. Thank you so much for being a part of this podcast, and I look forward to delivering more messages from beyond.